Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we came to the Reach to do some things that I had forgotten to do last time I was here, and also to reduce my terror, which was when I came here, or at least by the time I got to the circus, was at low 90s. It was pretty bad, but now it's at zero. Let's spend my level up. I'm going to go with an interlude in red and gold. Primary stat is... Uh, mirrors, then I'm going to go with the secondary stat that gives me a plus three in fails. You lost your mind once. They put you in a splendid hotel managed by a cheery gentleman who would determine when you could leave. How colorful the other guests were, how red the curtains, how gold the fittings, how secure the locks. Eventually, you were allowed to leave, but was your recovery genuine? No, you just learned to lie. You said what you had to, and they sent you home. Even now, your world is red and gold and splendid. I'm going to modify this a little bit. Right now, the world is not red and gold and splendid for Elizabeth. Um, this happened during their 30 years on the frontier of the sky. They saw a lot of things, a lot of things they didn't know how to process, and eventually ended up being put in a... I don't know why they describe it as a hotel. I'm sure it wasn't actually a hotel, some sort of a treatment center. And yeah, they did lie to get out, and when they got out, they were still, they still didn't know how to process the things they had seen, and they were hallucinating things, or, I mean, hell, in this world, maybe they weren't even hallucinations, maybe they were actually, maybe Elizabeth was actually seeing them. But either way, they weren't okay, even when they got out. But, you know, it's been 20 plus years since this happened, so there's still little, uh, the occasional, like, flash of red or gold Elizabeth sees around sometimes, but it's mostly gone. Now we're at 74 veils. I'm, I'm one away from two different thresholds. I'm one away from 75 veils and one away from 50 iron. Right, so in the Reach, I want to visit the Nature Reserve to turn in all my research stuff for a lot of money. I want to eventually visit Titania to see if there's any smuggling that I should do. That'll probably be one of the last things I do, though. Um, I actually want to go back to the circus because I forgot that I have a quest for the fortunate navigator to go to Pulmer and Plenty's and speak to the magician behind the tents. So that's one quest thing to do. And also, Kirillin is, well, sort of a quest thing to cure my soul so they might accept me at Caduceus. Oh, and I forgot to speak with the clay conductor after the meeting with Amberly Murgatroyd. His meeting with Amberly Murgatroyd's assistance was not a success. The clay conductor is brooding on his bunk. He's holding the urn containing the rubble of his friend. There was no one else like him, the conductor admits. I shall sing no more. He lapses into silence and will not speak again. Perhaps he's right. Perhaps there is no one who can sing in the way the conductor wishes. But you've heard certain stories. You might just have an idea. Propose an imaginative solution to the clay conductor's despond. What is this? A unlicensed chart? You may not know someone who can help, but perhaps there is a somewhere... On an old encoded chart, you've seen a place called the Forge of Souls. Together, you pour over the chart and the suppositions of travelers and traders. You find references to a Forge of Souls, a fabled foundry of the Blue Kingdom where new people can be made. Your efforts have proved that the person the conductor seeks does not exist. Therefore, it is necessary to invent them. The conductor's eyes shine like lit coals. Yes, Captain. We will go there. We will make a suitable companion. One with a voice to match mine. It does not bother to mention other characteristics. That sounds good. That's going to have to wait a very long time, though, unfortunately. Oh! I've gotten to the point where I can seduce the clay conductor. I think... Huh, I guess you can't romance all of the officers. 
Don't want to seduce them, though. The only person Elizabeth is interested in in the moment is the incognito princess. And I can attempt clay singing if I just had a gourd of chorister nectar, which I'm sure I have in my bank. Is there any point in doing this, though? I mean, we know that the person they want doesn't exist. I can't be that. I cannot be that person. And it would take up a moment of inspiration, and I'm trying to save those up for Langley Hall. So, mm, I don't think I'm going to do that. It's not necessary, and I don't think it would lead to anything really good. At the circus now for the Fortunate Navigator's quest. Ask the Humiliated Magician about tigers. The Fortunate Navigator is certain he'll be able to assist him in seeing a tiger. He's a magician, after all. The Magician contemplates the Fortunate Navigator. On your back, that is a body, not a mannequin. Uh, no, actually, I'd rather not know. He shifts so that Alton is not in view. You could try Peppercorn's daughter. Followed him into the business. She can even pull off his grand finale from when he was at Mahogany Hall. She's a traveling magician. She leaves some of her large props with me and returns to swap them when she's creating a new performance. I've no idea when she'll next return. It's always a delightful surprise. He does not sound delighted. You'll have to find her. She goes between Lustrum, Titania, and Port Prosper. Okay. Well, I was going to visit a couple of those places anyway, I think. Probably not Lustrum. Definitely Titania. And yeah, Port Prosper, I think I have a couple small things to do there, like dropping off a settler there or something. Titania. I fought a whole hell of a lot of bees coming here, by the way. Uh, lost a bit of hole. Two crew members. <laughs> it's amazing how often I fail the, like, I think it's about 85-90% skill checks to successfully get the nectar. But I gained, like, three or four nectar out of it. Also, Titania is under attack, of course. Rally to their defense. Success. Still lose yet another crew member. I've got five gourds of chorister nectar, though. What is there to do here? Art exhibition? Oh yeah, let's encourage a visitor to invest in Titania. A few brave art lovers from Albion are wandering the exhibits. The endless wallets of aristocracy. Although the prospect of advancing the cultural excellence of Titania doesn't do much for his lordship, the mention of enduring prestige and big plaque for the donor does. You leave him negotiating the power of his pocketbook with the Rhapsodic Mayor. I feel like I've done that before. Does that actually do anything? I don't know. I guess. Let's assist with port repairs. Yeah, just 10% damage. Costs just 10 sovereigns. Get a port report. Meet with a Rhapsodic Mayor? Sure. Oh right, a cutting of a petal for the Nature Reserve. So yeah, like, are they actually building this place up? A person that I talked to, to that I convinced to invest? I don't know how this works. Contribute funds? This is just for me to contribute funds. Maybe, it, oh, I bet like every time I convince somebody to invest, it probably increases the current funding progress by like 10% or something. Yeah, it's 100, 500, 800. Oh, that's... Wait. Why can't I contribute a thousand sovereigns? Oh. Because that would take me... That would be for 100% progress, which is more than they actually need. So it'd be 800 sovereigns to totally complete it, yeah. 100 sovereigns per 10%. 10 sovereigns per 1%. I still want to deliver the frickins of red honey to the mausoleum. But I don't want to fill up my hold with, with the frickins that I'm going to be holding on to for quite possibly a while. While I do all this other stuff. Because every time I come to a new port, you know, that's another opportunity to buy another bargain. 
So I don't want to just be dragging along the Firkins for no reason. I think just like when I've decided to go is when I'll come back to Titania specifically to do that. In the meantime, we have some searching to do. Is it in here? Yeah, look for the magician. Searching for Miss Peppercorn gives you a 27% chance of success. The fortunate navigator wants to see a tiger and needs a magician to do so. If she isn't afraid of bees, Miss Peppercorn, the traveling magician, might be here. Damn. Lucky. A near thing. A titanian points towards the far end of the dock where a woman in a in a battered tailcoat ferries boxes onto an engine. She beams as you approach. The great peppercorn, that's me. I've just finished here, but I'll be back, don't worry. The navigator's wide-eyed request for a private demonstration, one requiring skills only she possesses, catches at her pride. Glasswork? I understand. I am the best. She shakes her head. I just don't have the equipment with me. Tell you what, I'll meet you at Palmer and Plenty's. I'll get my speculo miraculum ready, she smiles. And because I like you, I'll only charge you 200 sovereigns. For the travel. More than fair, sure. Alright, let's head over to the nature reserve. At the nature reserve, let's join a hunting party. And I think this time, I'm actually going to join the party properly. 40% chance of success, but I think if you succeed, you get a caged catch, which I think I need those right now. I think they cost about 200 sovereigns if you buy them on their own. Yeah. Oh, and my terror also goes down as well. That's nice. Right. What is there to do? Port report? Mm, I know we need to go on an expedition with this person. Two sky stories. Let's turn in all our research. It's always so satisfying. All right, here we go. Wings of a Chorister Bee. 300 sovereigns. Sample of Ibris Pus. 300 sovereigns. Stomach of a Cantankery. 250 sovereigns. Titanian Cutting. 250 sovereigns. Fungal Crinoline from a Mushroom Meteoroid. 300 sovereigns. Pen of a Scribe Spinster. 400 sovereigns. Ligaments of a Guest. 500 sovereigns. Mandrake from Trader's Wood. 300 sovereigns. <laughs> so much money. Ah. I love this place. Just went to New Winchester and got some more crew, repaired and dropped off a bunch of chorister nectar and whatnot, and now I'm at the circus. Let's ask Miss Peppercorn to show you a tiger. She stands beside a full-length mirror framed in ornately patterned bronze. She is delighted to see you. Do you have the money for the fuel? Weight not counted. Miss Peppercorn transfers the coins from one hand to the next. With a wiggle of her fingers, the coins are gone. She basks in the navigator's conspicuous delight. You're all right, you are. She nods towards Alton, once more on the navigator's back. And I've had worse audiences than your gray friend. <laughs> At least he's not throwing anything. <laughs> I've surpassed my father, you know. And he could fill Mahogany Hall. She pats the navigator's arm. I'm certainly the only person who could do this as cheaply, and with as few accoutrements. In fact, I only need one more thing. She beams and looks at you expectantly. Ask what more Miss Peppercorn needs. The navigator looks decidedly crestfallen. Even the jovial, jovial piping of the circus calliope cannot cheer him. Not a feline fan. I need a cat. I will not catch one for you, she scowls. And once you have one, you better keep an eye on it. I don't like the gossiping little things. They're too fond of scandal to be trustworthy. The traveling magician requires a cat. It seems any will do. Well, we have, like, demonic little cats <laughs> with the eccentric... Uh, what were they called exactly? Eccentric... Feline eccentric. Is that enough? 
Offer the magician the useless cat. Look at that picture. That's not useless. It has a lot of use, like being cute. I don't have it, though. Uh, catch a dock cat and bring it to Miss Peppercorn. Requires three salon stewed gossip. How hard can it be? You'll need fresh gossip as bait. I love the fact that I'm literally using gossip to attract cats. Because cats actually love gossip and are, I think, can even talk normally. And uh, this, this universe is just amazing. It is only a 21% chance of success, though. That is so bad. Let's do it. Success! That's an auspicious sign. You order your crew to scour the docks with a fishing net and that rumor about a certain wealthy widow. It's not long before the indignant sound of hissing announces your crew's success. Miss Peppercorn directs the navigator to deposit the thrashing bundle before the mirror. The caught cat stills when it catches sight of its own reflection. The reflection shows a tiger sitting among the tatters of a flimsy fishing net. Behind it is a steaming amber-lit jungle. The tiger claws its way free of the final strands, steps closer. With a scornful yowl, the cat steps into the mirror. The fortunate navigator gasps. Miss Peppercorn beams. You glimpsed a moment in Parabola, where every cat is a big cat. <laughs> I love that. Uh, okay, what now? Let's check on them. Oh, it takes a moment of inspiration. I'm glad I have one. He only speaks when questioned. He has missed the last three crew poker nights. You'll need to tease out what's caused his change in mood. An eventual goodbye. You find the navigator in a quiet corridor to the rear of the engine. He's staring out of the window. When you speak, he jumps. Damn, oh, sorry, Captain. I thought I was alone. He takes you back to his cabin. It's tidy. His desk is empty but for a fresh journal. His clothes are neatly folded on his footlocker. Alton's body lies on his bed. The body wears only the garments it wore in the graveyard. We have one last journey to make, one last adventure. It'll be an ending fit for King Gassar himself. I want to take Alton to Death's Door. Wants to take his friend to Death's Door in the Blue Kingdom. Man, a lot more things are pointing to the Blue Kingdom. I have quite a lot to do there, don't I? Uh, okay, so I just went to the Blue Kingdom Transit Relay here. Remember, this is literally where we started the game. I haven't been here in forever. Last I remember, I think I needed to, like, find some way to repair it. And that was the end of it. It was broken. So I just went back, just, I don't know, see if there was, like, an option to repair it or something. Because it had been so long, and... I think it might be repaired, and I don't know why. It seems to be up and going, because, I mean, look at this. Submit the paperwork for a travel permit. I, maybe just enough time has passed that they've just fixed it? I have no idea. London only has a single faltering embassy there. Thanks to the lack of traffic, many London officials consider this a cushy post. Those stationed here are in good favor with the department. Let's apply for a permit. 500 sovereigns? That's not bad at all. A ministry stamp permit. You'll need references of acceptable character. And of course, there's a processing fee. Future captains in your lineage will inherit the permit. Oh, cool. The official considers you from behind his desk at the relay gate. Hmm. A thoughtful nod. We must be cautious, for the Empire's safety. He appraises you. We need to be certain you're the right sort of captain. He picks up the coin purse you've placed on the counter, considers its heft. Clearly, you are. He bears a tobacco-tinted smile as he prepares your permit. The paper is white as a lamb's wool, and thick enough to make an undignified wobbling noise when he hands it over. I can just go there right now. Takes another worldly artifact to go first class. I've got 14 of those, no problem. Wow. 
Maybe I should go there sooner than I thought. I, hmm. There's still so much to do, though, in Albion and Eleutheria. Anyway, I'm certainly not going there, like, right right now. I have some stuff to do in the Reach. At Carillon. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to be doing to my soul here. Let's just see. I remember the Overgrown Shrine. Let's contemplate the statue. Reduce our terror a little bit. Let's get a port report as well. I don't think there's anything to speak to the presiding deviless about. Let's go see, though. Nope, doesn't look like it. Travel around. Right, so what's actually up with my soul? What's up, soul? The definition of a clear soul is the soul is fully transparent, no swirls, no clouding, no personality. Ugh, that's not good. The soul is icy to the touch, dispassionate, clinical, removed. Stained. Soul appears damaged, scorched, reckless, dangerous, and fatally curious. And fermented. Soul appears faintly bubbling in its bottle. It is pungent of odor and indifferent to taboo. So do I need all of these gone? So at some point my soul became clear. That's one of the two things that I couldn't do here before. I couldn't visit the garden that requires you to have a clear soul, and I still can't visit the one that needs you to have a flickering soul, but let's do this one. Penance, endurance can be gained here. Visit the sand garden. It descends into a tunnel. Carved over the mouth of the tunnel are symbols of death. A skull, a flail, a fly on its back. The way is dark and the air is cold. The sand crunches underfoot. Hmm. So, you embrace danger, you will not be deterred, or you are numb. I feel like I should pick the one that fits clear. Clear is no personality, right? So, you're numb, you feel nothing. All the ordinary sensations left you long ago. In time, the tunnel narrows until the walls brush your shoulders, and you're squeezing through a way that does not want to welcome you. The devils call this place a garden in jest. It's barren sand, under the rest of Carillon, not served by any sunlight. The sand is coarse and itchy, the air dry and overhot. One feels hungry, thirsty, even a bit faint, just standing here. The penitents here are mostly fierce, burly types, some of them scarred. One or two look as though they rightfully should be dead. Cure your clear soul. I need ten penance to do that. Does that just mean ten of any type of penance, or...? Hmm. Let's approach the penitent ape. What is it doing here? He has collected human souls, and now he is here to cultivate them. Cultivating souls, what does that what does that mean? That doesn't sound good. Assist them, I guess. How did he even gain entry to the sand garden? Nonsensical chatter. He tells you in a low mutter, this soul was a gambler, but a good one, able to remember odds and figures, fast at seeing an opponent's bluff. Took bets where he shouldn't. Calculated the odds of dying in a knife fight and decided he didn't mind a 10% risk if the pot was large enough. A good soul, but it would be a better one if it could be coaxed post-mortem into a little more sense of mortality. <laughs> that would make it more poignant. At least, so you gather, the ape does not use words like poignant, but you take its meaning. You are helping a Pentecost ape who would rather be other than he is. Okay, so how would I help them? Either Penance Excess 5, or Penance Inescapable Truth 5. Excess or Truth? Which one's easier for me? Excess or Truth? 
Here's excess. Oh, and this is truth, the one I can't go to, so it has to be excess. Let's visit this one. I know I've been here before. Is this where the nurse is? Don't remember which one of these I chose last time. Hellish Penitent. What did you need? Oh, so I could... Ah, uh, alright. So five of this. So basically, out of the three uh, different gardens that require you to have a certain state of soul, what the penitent person there requires is always either five of... Well, it's five of one of the two other exclusive places that require you to have a certain type of soul. Okay. Uh, what's it going to take to get five there? Well, I mean, okay, let's go back to the sand garden, sure. Embrace danger. I probably shouldn't have clicked that because that's not honest, but whatever. Doesn't actually do anything, I think. 34% chance of success. Oof. And I know when you fail, at least with the others, when you fail, you get you gain terror. And I need five of these. <laughs> well, shit. Let me see if I can change my officers around to get more iron. Okay, yeah, I actually changed, I think, three of my officers. Or two officers and one mascot. And now it's a 40% chance, which is still pretty bad, but... Um... Yeah, let's go... If it was 50%, then it would, on average, take 10 times to get the five that I need. This was 40%, so... A little bit worse than that. How much terror do I gain? Let's see, I'm at 24%. 29, so you gain 5%. Okay, one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Okay, that was actually, I think, relatively lucky. So I can take those to... Which one? That was Endurance, so I can take them to the Garden of Insatiable Roses. The Hellish Penitent. Yes, offer a serving of Endurance. If the Deviless has trouble remaining the same for long, perhaps this is the cure. That makes me feel old just looking at it, she says, prodding what you offer with one fingertip. How long did you hang around to get this? The desiccated penance rolls lopsided across the table. But when she stops jesting long enough to try it, what a change. Her color changes, her eyes darken from yellow to amber, and then almost to brown. Will the change last, she demands. Can my soul truly be refined now? Across the table, one of the other penitents mutters. Still haven't learned to stop asking questions you don't want answers to. But the Deviless is happy. 500 experience and a vision of the heavens. Okay. So now for the other one, I should gain five penances of excess. Oh fuck, that requires hearts. <laughs> That's going to be even harder... Okay, let me go check my officers. Okay, does anybody want to tell me why I have two minuses here for my hearts? Why is it 25 minus minus two? What the fuck does that mean? I don't like it. Okay, with my officers changed around, which I think was just the Rat Brigade? Or the Rat... They're called the Ratty Reunion now, I think. Uh, they give me plus 10 hearts. So that was the big one. Now I'm at 27%. Yeah. Here we go. I'm at 54%. I'm not going to do this too much. Because I still want to do some exploring before I can head back to the circus. One. I'll go up to 70%. Oh, 
or 69. Yeah, okay, that's a good number to start and stop at. 69%. Cool. Okay, this is a little weird. So, I just went to one of these other ones that I have a high skill check for. One of the other pendences, that is. And for the Pendants of Enlightenment, I have literally a 100% chance of success. I can't fail this. I can just get as many pen pendences as I want. So now I have 10 pendences. I'm, I don't think the specific type matters for what I want to do. So, like, was that just a guaranteed success? For then doing... Which one was it? Excess? No, en Endurance. Is this the one where I need a 10 penances to fix my soul? Yeah. Cure your clear soul. Need 10 penance. So you can just unlimitedly farm penance with no risk at all if you have enough skill in something. That's weird. That just feels weird. Alright, well let's get rid of my clear soul. Although, now that means I can't enter to help the ape. Oh well, it, it's not that big of a deal. There are, of course, still a number of other things wrong with your soul, at least as far as the devils are concerned. Four Tales of Terror, a Savage Secret, and 500 Experience. Oh, and it looks like it doesn't even consume the penances, so... I can just go right over to... Which one is this? Stain Soul? And just get rid of that. Perhaps you've looked into topics you should not have. Perhaps your soul has been consumed and spat out again by an unspeakable beast. Clean again. There are still a few flaws in your soul, but matters are improving. Four Tales of Terror, Four Sky Stories, and 500 Experience. And it looks like the Bell Garden is where I can cure my fermented soul. Perhaps you've eaten that which you should not. Perhaps you've come in contact with something unclean. At any rate, your soul has gone a bit off. Yeah, I've, co I've come in contact with a lot of things that are unclean. I've been spending a lot of time in, inside of rotting, massive crustaceans. Your soul is nearly in good condition now. Five hundred experience and two visions of the heavens. And then I think this is the final one. The stunted grove seems to be where I can cure my cold soul. Indifference to love can be corrected, but not easily. Feeling creeps back, slowly at first. Your soul is pristine as a newborn baby's. 500 experience, a vision of the heavens, and four sky stories. Um, they would describe yours as tantalizingly opaque and rich with personality. And my soul, that is. I think we're good. I was just on my way to Lustrum to do something that I'll explain in a minute. And this popped up, the thing in the mist. A sudden jolt. I think we hit something, comrade, your driver observes. The mists are thick. You could turn back and search for it. Hmm. Double back. Would use up fuel, there might be danger, but perhaps whatever you hit was valuable, or perhaps it needs help. Is that going to reduce my terror, or keep going? I'm not sure which one's going to reduce my terror. Obviously this one will, but it'll increase my nightmares. Hmm. I don't know if I want to be at three nightmares. I'm scared about what that means. Let's keep going. Oh, it increased my terror slightly. Just one, though. Better not to know. Whatever treasure, horror, or debris wandered into your path, you will leave it to the mists. Oh god, what is this now? A disturbance in the night. You wake suddenly. Your candles have burned low and your eyes are still heavy with sleep. You are alone in your cabin. The winds of the wilderness howl outside. You can feel the motion of the engine below you. Something isn't right. And my only option is to go back to sleep. It's only the wind howling out in the dark. That's scary. That can't be nothing. Long dark night. You press your head to the pillow. A few minutes later, you are awake again. You feel an ache in your chest, and the image of Langley Hall swims behind your eyes. 
the call of sleep pulls you again. You could, you realize, take a nip of something to ensure an undisturbed sleep. Or you might risk dreaming and find whatever it is that keeps slipping from your grasp. Perchance to dream, you'll dare it. Moments after closing your eyes, you're dragged into sleep. You are at Langley Hall. Light floods from the windows. Laughter and music and the sound of glasses clinking can be heard from within. Here you'll always be safe. If you would, but come home. Langley Hall is in your dreams. Each night you walk its hallways and descend its stairs. That is very cool. I was wondering what about the place would call to me because it... You know, it made such a big deal of the fact that you'd have trouble leaving Langley Hall the longer you stayed at it. It's calling us back. I've arrived at Lustrum. So I think I'm going to end the episode here. I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, and the reason I came to Lustrum... Well, the reason I came to Lustrum at first was to go to the Grave of the Silent Saint... Because just like the rotting celestial corpse, this also has its own exploration encounter thing that they've added in the Wayfair update. But, as I also just found out, just going around Lustrum, getting port reports and stuff like that, and seeing how far I could reduce my terror, there's actually a couple more things to do on Lustrum that you'll see next episode too. <laughs>